Welcome back. Joining us for a look at the day's market activity is Graeme Frank from PSG Wealth, Sant and Grace. And Graeme, uh, happy new year. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Same to you and all viewers. Fantastic. Graeme, if I just look at uh, the planet, it does look like uh, we're heading uh, into uh, some tensions. Uh, and I'm keen to get your thoughts uh, on this, specifically looking at how market participants are making sense of what we're seeing around the globe. Sorry, making things safe, did you say? M making sense. Oh, making sense. Yes. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, just to take a step back, last year was just it was just such a huge diversion of returns. The U.S. market was, you know, up 24 percent. We were up only 1.8. The FTSE, which is another big developed market, was up 1.9. Um, you know, the Hang Seng, which basically a barometer of China, was down 19. So it was a massive year last year. Um, I do agree with you that uh, politics are going to be huge this year. Uh, we've already seen these oil strikes by the U.S. and the UK, uh, which just caused the oil price to, to spike. So a lot of volatility going into this year. I think probably the biggest theme is going to be politics. There are um, there's 70 elections this year alone. Obviously, the U.S. is the big one in November. Well, we think 5th of November. Um, and the, the first one to kick off actually um, is going to be Taiwan, which is key in that China area to see how things are stabilizing there. And that's in January. And then, of course, we've got our own one, which will probably be April or May. So a huge, huge political year. And no one can predict what that's going to impact the, the stock market. Uh, towards the end of last year, Graham, we were starting to feel a little bit upbeat about the inflation picture as well as the interest rate picture. But if you, uh, you know, just mentioned this oil spike and we're not sure what that means, what we're seeing happening uh, in the Red Sea as well. Uh, I'm wondering if the risk profile has now changed. Uh, yeah, I think it's changed. I mean, just a, a few answers to those questions. The Chinese trade data came out and that was weak, which basically means the rest of the world's economies are weaker than expected because China is obviously a massive exporter to the rest of the world. So on the one hand, you've got you know global GDP looking a little bit weaker, which is obviously very good for interest rates. I interest rates should come down in a weak economic environment. Um, but then on the other hand, you had U.S. Uh, CPI and inflation figures out recently, and that was a slight uptick. So the one offsets the other. The market took took it positively that possibly interest rates are not going to be hiked, that the global environment is still conducive to rates going down. And on the back of that, um, stocks, in particular U.S. stocks rallied. The tech sector, as I'm sure you'll probably want to talk about, uh, continues to remain an extremely robust uh, in U.S. markets at the moment. So it really has been where to invest, even within the equity space. And that's before we've spoken about bonds or property or cash or any of the other um, asset classes out there. Okay, let's talk about that Magnificent Seven if we're expecting uh, that rally to continue. Uh, you know, is it possible that the, some of these stocks have uh, peaked and uh, there could be no more uh, growth coming from them? Yeah, so, I mean, if we just take it at, at the broader picture, as I said, the S&P 500 was up about 24%. The NASDAQ was up, I'm talking last year, last calendar year, the NASDAQ was up 45 uh, 44.8 to be exact and as you rightly say those magnificent seven were up a lot more than the 44.8 so um our uh, house view as psg is that uh, you should be wary of the tech sector at the moment that said the momentum is strong they've got a lot of tailwinds nvidia's come out with a new chip microsoft has come out with good numbers uh, the one poor one was Apple, the iPhone sales, iPad sales, not looking so good. So that one wasn't as good, but a lot of tailwinds in that tech sector. So, you know, in the short term, I always hard to predict, but I think it will uh, it will continue. And the other thing I said earlier about interest rates possibly peaking and coming down, that is a very, very strong tailwind for the tech sector. And I think that's what the market's uh, pricing in, by the way. So has it all been priced in? I think the vast majority of it, but uh, the tailwinds, do remain strong and in our business we remain in more the quality of those stocks you know the microsoft apple google and uh, nvidia to an extent although we think that's quite expensive i will also ask you about the conversations around a global recession we've kind of had the conversation on and off at some point time uh, you know thinking that we'd definitely see a recession and thinking that uh, to see lower inflation we would definitely have to go into some form of inflation maybe globally we haven't quite seen that uh, graham and i'm wondering um if this year with all the political uh, risk that uh, lies ahead and even the geopolitical risk uh, that lies ahead this is the year that uh, some form of a global recession uh, may materialize yeah, I mean, um, ironically, coming into last year, this time last year, the big one of the big themes was a U.S. 
recession and definitely, or well, maybe a US recession, definitely a European recession, just how severe would the U European recession be? Coming into this year, uh, the, the dialogue is not quite so uh, adamant that a, a recession will be there. We think we will avoid a recession um, as interest rates start coming down. But as I say, those Chinese export data are pointing to things being a little bit softer than, uh, than the market was expecting. But as I said, ironically, that's caused the market to go up because there's a greater chance of rates coming down or coming down quicker than, uh, than the market was anticipating. And by the way, uh, on, a, on a tangent to that, the US 10-year yield, which is a barometer of what interest rates are going to do, you know, that peaked at 5.5% a few months ago, and it's down to sort of 4.5%. So that's telling you rates have peaked and they're likely to come down. Uh, Graham, I also want to ask you about the issue of uh, the U.S. Uh, budget and the government running up uh, half a trillion dollars, uh, you know, there in the fiscal year there. The U.S. budget, the debt uh, conversation, is this something we're concerned about? Or are we, uh, you know, uh, convinced that the U.S. economy is so strong uh, that it can manage uh, certain headwinds, uh, this being one of them? Yeah, that has been uh, the, the U.S. deficit and, and the, the debt pile has been, uh, has been a problem for a while. They, uh, they have managed to navigate that quite successfully, actually, up until now. What would worry me within that context would be the possibility of politics getting involved as we move towards the election. Obviously, the, the, it's, it's quite binary in the U.S. market. You know, you've got the Republicans on one hand and the Democrats on the other hand, and there's very little middle ground. So I worry that that might get a little bit ugly. In the, in the I mean, if we think our politics are ugly, I think the, uh, you know, the U.S. politics can be quite, uh, quite aggressive and quite dramatic running up to an election. I think that worries me a little bit more than uh, the actual as we stand right now in a non-election um, year. I think they'd be able to navigate that deficit. Well, Graham, in, in light of all of uh, the risks that we've spoken about today, I'm keen to get uh, your stock pick uh, for this uh, afternoon. Uh, which counter uh, then you know, bodes well in this environment? Okay, so quick, quickly before I go to the stock mm. pick, just uh, the one other bit of company news yes. is Burberry issued a profit warning yeah. today, and that's had an impact on the luxury sector, including Richmond. So I was going to go for Richmond at, at one point, but on the back of that news, no. I'm going to go for British American Tobacco. It's uh, it's boring. Um, cigarette <laughs> volumes are declining, but vape volumes in the e-cigarettes, as they call them, is going up significantly. Um, that is currently on a, on a dividend yield of 10%, an all-time low PE of six times. And uh, we've got a target price that's 30% higher than the current pound uh, target price. So we think there's very good value, and they haven't kept up with Philip Morris in terms of their share price. So from a share price perspective as well, we think the technicals are quite, uh, are quite good. Well, Graham, an absolute pleasure catching up with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, that was Graham Frank from PSG Wealth, Santon Grayston.